Hi everyone, this is Scott with Cyberscribe.org and this video is going to be talking about setting up your own networking lab if you're studying for Cisco certifications like the CCNA or CCENT or things like that. One thing to think about here is if you're not going to a, a classroom where that has a Cisco lab and if you don't have access to it with your job or something else, it can be kind of a problem maybe not for everybody, but it can be an issue if you spend your whole time studying from a book to work on physical equipment and then you get a job where you're with dealing with the physical equipment and it's not to say that you're not going to know what you're doing but it might be kind of jarring considering that you never worked on physical equipment before and that's the point of the Cisco lab, it's not really to do every single thing on these old junky routers and switches but it's to become familiar with how these things work and the connections and the lights and, and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't have the opportunity to have it have that in a classroom lab or at your work, well, that could become an issue. So that's why many people set up their Cisco labs at home like this. Now let's get talking about what we have here. Okay, the top and the bottom are two switches and the and these are the front of the switch. You see, that's where you plug in your ports and everything down here. You have 24. Uh, this 12 is a little bit of an anomaly. You don't see too many 12 port switches. But when you're doing your labs, you're not going to be using more than a handful anyways. And so don't worry about getting something that's not exactly what you're used to seeing. And in the middle, we have two routers. Here, this is just the metal plate. This is for an expansion card. And these open bays are also for expansion cards. The stuff that I bought was cheap, so these don't always have that. It doesn't matter because I'm not using these anyways. Just be aware that if you see someone selling this with an expansion bay that doesn't have that metal plate, don't be put off by it too much because these two work just fine for me, for what I do. And down here you have your Ethernet connections. These are fast Ethernet, but they say Ethernet. Uh, down here you have your, they're in yellow, and you just have one on this one. And you have your console ports, which we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the console is what you use to connect directly to the router or the switch. Now, before anything else, Cisco IOS 12 is what you want. All of these have an operating system in them, and it's called the Cisco IOS, Internet Working Operating System. The current one is 15, but if, you, if you're buying current equipment, you're going to spend hundreds of dollars, and odds are your budget is not really going to be using this. Because I don't use this for anything other than doing it on the lab. I mean, I have, I have another, I, I don't really have the need at this point to use this real networking equipment just for for studying or for my for my own uh, home network here so that's one thing is cisco ios 12 is where you want to start this bottom switch has cisco ios 11 and the commands are very different and these are 12 commands are very different now remember you're going to get tested on cisco ios 15 the commands the difference in, in uh, commands between iOS 12 and 15, there's not that big of a difference. Many of them, dare I say most, are the same. Not for Cisco iOS 11. So the equipment that you're going to buy, if you're not looking to spend too much money, it's going to be old. So just be aware you want to get Cisco iOS 12. Okay. Now, we're looking here at the front of the switches and the back of the routers. So let me turn around these top two so you can see what the front and the back of the routers and switches are and why you do it this way. This top one, this is the back of the switch. Same thing on the bottom. This has The bottom has two fans. There's not much of a difference. But you have your power cable and you have your console cable. Now, your console cable is what you use to physically connect your computer to the switch to configure configure the router or the switch. On the switches, it's on the back. Just something to be aware of. And as you see the Cisco router here, this is the front. You have a couple lights, but there's really nothing else on the front. That's why 
you use, you know, you use the back for these things. So let's just move it back around. Okay. One thing too to remember is make sure to get a console cable. This is your RJ45 that you plug into your router or switch. And this is the serial cable end that you're going to use to connect to your computer. So when you're buying your routing equipment here, make sure you get a, a console cable. And also, most computers now don't have serial ports, so the other thing that you're going to need to get is a USB adapter. You plug in the light blue serial to this side, and you plug in the USB over here. And then you connect it to your computer, and you can connect to the management interface, the iOS of these routers and switches through PuTTY or Territory or something like that. And that's all that I wanted to show you about here. Remember, setting up a network lab is not about doing comprehensively everything in the book and replicating it. Sometimes you're not going to be able to do that. As a price point, this, all these, these four cost me about $100. And I, I wouldn't want to go higher than $100. And the point is you don't have to. Just remember to get iOS 12 or better. Because this, this can switch the ports and this can and do basic stuff, but for learning the iOS, it's useless for me because what's the point of learning an outdated operating system when I'm going to get tested on the newer ones up here? And just be aware of that. iOS 12 is where you want to start. And that's it. Uh, I think the importance of setting up a lab here is just to get some hands-on experience with this if you have no other way of getting hands-on experience. You never know. It might come come back to, you know, you might be thanking yourself when you get your job and you have some issue that came up on this that did not come up on a packet tracer or network simulator. And that's all I have. If you liked it, subscribe and send me a comment, and uh, I'll be doing more of these Cisco videos, so uh, stay tuned.